Good evening, YouTube. Guess what? Something new for us to play with tonight. This is a solid state 12 volt dual battery kit. It contains cables, battery terminals, etc. And the absolute masterpiece in the middle is a VSR, which is a voltage sensitive relay, which is all that lives in this little box. This little box is the dual battery controller. Now the reason that this is smart, smart, smart circuitry is so we ground this wire. Our positive from our battery off the uh, front of a vehicle and our load, that's it. That is the end of your install. That is all you have to do. And as soon as your vehicle battery has, your vehicle has started, it's up above 12.8 volts, this will start feeding current to your battery that is lower than 12.8 in the back straight basically straight from your alternator this will combine your two battery systems and just start feeding power down to it comes with a huge lead how long is the big lead just say so is no I'm gonna say it's like five meters complete wiring kit 140 amps Easy to install, proven reliability. Now, solid state relay will definitely prove its reliability. Doesn't actually say. Gives you a wiring diagram, which is pretty simple. That probably doesn't need to be explained. Nice quality, nice quality cable. So there's your shorter earth cable, your longer main power cable. It's going in a Toyota Coaster Bus. The Coaster Bus um, is the one we did the power install with a couple of gel cells. Uh, customer just wants a bit more uh, guaranteed grunt just in case he's in a shady environment for a few days straight or he wants to run something more serious off his 1000 watt ridge rider inverter that we installed. Now the ridge rider inverter cuts out at 11.7 volts which sounds quite high especially when you put a bit of sag on a battery um, they don't always keep up with that demand but the reason that they cut out at such a high voltage is to probably to protect the waveform in the inverter and protect the inverter's efficiency. So it's not always a bad thing. Gel cells will normally be so much stronger and can draw off for a lot longer anyway than a normal AGM battery. And we use two 6 volt ones and they're 220 amp hour. Serious batteries. So this will just give him that boosted power from his vehicle battery when his vehicle's running. Now this vehicle's made to run a massive twin climate control system. It was a passenger bus for 12, 14 people, whatever. It's also made to run indoor, inside running lights, which were all incandescent. Big headlights, uh, indicators and flashing lights on the top and outside of the bus to indicate that it's stopping and school zones and all that kind of stuff. So the bus is going to have a good quality Denso power system, being Toyota. As soon as you say Denso, you should know it's decent quality. It'll charge to 14.4 uh, volts generally. It's going to kick out heaps of power. Now, that power is normally not needed because what happens is, and it's diesel, so no fuel pumps or anything like that to run. So once it kicks over and it's started, there's not a great deal of vehicle systems that are running. Um, he's generally only going to be driving around during the daytime, that kind of thing. It means he's going to be able to use more power out of his low voltage system. He's got 1000 watt inverter, like I said, 1000 watt pure sine wave, and he's also got some DC outlets for a big Waco fridge. I believe he bought a Waco, a big fridge anyway, and all kinds of charging sockets for phones, laptops, etc. etc. His inverter is going to be used to charge cords, tools, things like that. Um, he's got a plan to do a bit of work out of the vehicle. We just don't want his power system to let him down at any stage. Just we really want to keep the uh, juice up to things. And if he needs to run something a little bit more substantial out of his inverter, he can start the bus for a few minutes, let it tick over, build up that bit of storage. And as soon as he turns it off, this drops down to 12.8. This cuts, disconnects the uh, disconnects the charge system on the vehicle battery. As soon as it hits 12.8 and protects the, um, the the vehicle battery so it guarantees the vehicle start again 
at the same time as ensuring there's a disconnect between the two systems. Now something I thought of just after uh, having a look at how simple this is, you actually mount this back panel, this one just snaps on and off that back panel, a couple of screws go right through see. Now there's no reason that if you in an emergency had to start the vehicle you couldn't bridge these two together, a bit of steel whatever, by bridging those two together you'll be connecting the rear battery straight to the front battery or the vehicle battery straight to the auxiliary battery and uh, you can quite easily fire it up. Now this was a bit cheaper than the Victron um, battery combiner which has an automatic built in. That being said the Victron didn't come with any of the accessories or the wiring or anything like that and this is something that's really easy for him to get his hands on and replace if we ever needed to down the track. Um, like I said, sold at a super cheap auto store and uh, a good simple setup that anyone can wrap their heads around, do a bit of reading and you, you're all over it. So, good quality product, nice leads, nice terminals, fixing kit, etc. all comes with it. We'll test it and see how many amps we can get through it and depending on the uh, state of charge, etc. in the bus battery. I'm doing the install on this on the weekend. So uh, we should have a video out within a week later, depending on how in-depth we go. But I will make some install videos on exactly how to install one of these in your bus. And this is the simplest, just the easiest way you could install a second battery without modifying or wrecking your existing vehicle systems um, contained on the vehicle. You probably wouldn't want to try and use it as a DC to DC between you and your caravan. Uh, you will get voltage drop. That being said, if you run a great big lead like this to the caravan battery and one of these in between, you're probably not going to get that much voltage drop. But this is more made for a twin under bonnet system or a charge system with batteries in the back. Thanks heaps for watching. Subscribe buttons are up here. I'll link this, uh, a, a version of this from banggood.com. Just a very, very, uh, not variable. Voltage sensitive relay, style dual battery kit in the top of the video description if you want to go and check one of them out. Helps the channel out heaps. Thanks, guys. And uh, we'll catch you on the next video. Soon you'll see us installing this. Catches.